We've come a long way. We have a black president, or I'm supposed to say African-American president, and we have white people faking black. <laughs> <laughs> to get a job, no less. What if it ain't racism? racism? What if it actually is placism? That's me. You're too black. I've heard that. You're not black enough. I've heard that one too. You have that good hair. Yeah, I do. You're not like them. Well, who are them? And still I smile, because I'm not so certain that when I was hearing all of those things, it was racism. Inherently, I felt like people thought I should be in a certain place or they felt they were in a different place in juxtaposition to where I was. So that 1%, that number's too high. Because there's only one me. And there's only one you. So I can tell you about a multitude of black millionaires and Hispanic entrepreneurs who all built something and sent it to the masses. but that's material. The question is, why does that work? How have these people transcended? The Oprah, the Jordan, even Geraldo Rivera. How have they transcended offering real things of real value to real people? So rather than leave you with an image of the Mercedes or the Daddy Warbucks, I'll leave you with this image of someone offering something real with something of value to someone else real. Thank you. Growing up in America, and you know, I am from a from a from a biracial background. Um, and, and I would also say an atypical background because, you know, the sport I did was not considered, you know, a black sport or, you know, sometimes in the classroom I was the only black kid. So I found myself in environments where, uh, that were actually diverse or not so diverse but not, you know, around people of my own kind, yet it was never the issue in my house or house is. I'm a child of divorce too, very 80s. So. The narrative we're getting fed via the media, via Al or Jesse, is this victim thing. And, and, and it's forcing people to draw lines in the sand that really aren't necessarily there. Uh, I'm not saying that racism doesn't exist. But at the same time, we, you know, I think the president, who happens to be black and white, you know, how did he get through it if it's so bad? You know, how, how did he become Mr. President if it's so bad, if he's so oppressed? How did Eric Holder become Attorney General if it's so bad and he's so oppressed? Was he lucky? Probably lucky, but he probably worked his butt off and he probably provided something, like I say in my talk, of real value to real people. And that's it.